Hello, Mark. Hey, Lex, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Happy Thursday. Here we are uh, on our Traders Workshop. Um, and I think we're talking about part two of butterflies, which in this case will be broken wing butterflies. Is that correct? That's correct. It's another Thursday. It's another uh, Market Shot Traders Workshop and uh, building off of everything that we've been talking about with synthetics and you know composing all these different spreads from call spreads to put spreads to butterflies to condors. And now we're going to take that standard butterfly and we're going to break it up a little bit to give it a little bit more special sauce on top. Oh, okay. I love this. So this, this might be um, like a sort of, when you broke, when you break a wing in a butterfly, you, it's kind of a, you have a bias to which direction you think the stock is going. Is that true or not true? I can't remember. That's exactly it, right? And Did I make so that up? I think it, uh, <laughs> typically what you do with a butterfly is, you know, we talk about a butterfly as being very much a, a market neutral type strategy. Okay. It benefits from either long or short volatility, but it doesn't necessarily have a directional bias per se. Okay. Like you might pick up some deltas one way or the other, stock sure. move, but, you know, fundamentally it doesn't necessarily have a directional bias. Whereas once you start breaking the wings, um, and by breaking the wings, we mean having different length call and put spreads that compose that butterfly. Mm -hmm. Once you start having uneven lengths there and broken wings, you, your spread gets a little bit of a directional bias, which can right. be great. You can have both a short ball play with a directional bias up or down. Perfect. Okay. Are you going to, let's, let's do one of these. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Are you sharing? Can, yeah, I can pull up and share my screen. Uh, okay. Perfecto mundo. Okay, you're doing a little what if there. Good. Yeah, I was uh, I was cheating. I uh, I uh, got a little ahead of myself here, but let's okay. let's start from the very beginning. Um, okay. so I got uh hood up here. Very fun name, very popular name. Tons of volume over the last week. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone loves trading Robinhood. Um, so I I wanted to uh, pull that up to sort of show what like uh, some of these broken wing butterflies might look like. Good. Um, and we can do this with both calls and puts. Um, so I think we can start on the put side. Um, you know, you're going to ask me, why do I trade the puts? Um, and my biases and, uh, my tongue in cheek answer is always that I like to mess with the put call ratio, um, by, <laughs> by trading more puts. Um, so, uh, no, but in all seriousness, uh, you can do this either way, right? You can do it with calls and yep. be bullish. You can do it with puts and be bullish. Um, so, uh, really, uh, you know, as we learned with synthetics, it doesn't necessarily matter which side of the. Uh, sort of ledger you're trading here. Um, Got it. Uh, yep. Okay. So, um, in the broken wing butterfly, um, we can think about this the same way as we think about a regular butterfly, in mm -hmm. the sense that it's composed of a long put spread and composed of a short put spread. So, if we were to do a regular even butterfly, you know, right at the money here, 48, mm -hmm. uh, I'd sell two of the 48s. Um, and I buy one of the 46 and one of the 50. Okay. So, so that's a standard butterfly one, two, one spaced evenly. No, no trickiness there, right? No trickiness here. We're $2 in leg length on either side. Um, you know, this is very standard butterfly here. Okay. But, and I'll show the what if real quick on, uh, what that's going to look like. And, you know, we're going to see that sort of classic, tented peak in the middle, yep. um, you know, where we make the most money if stock sits right where we are, we're short uh, vol, we're collecting carry, um, and we have the, the wings on either side where we leave the credit that we pay for this. Got it. So what happens if I adjust the legs here? So, uh, you know, if, back to the uh, long put spread, long call spread, we're short the 48, 46 put spread, yep. and we're long the 50, 48 put spread. Right. So you can move them here too, Mark. If you want to grab a hit on one of those, you can move the legs if you want. That's kind of the, the cool guy's way to do it. Just, just, oh, look at that. And when you find your new spot, left click again. Would you go. look at that? Wow, you learn something new every day. I'm learning in the trader's workshop here. This is fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> so now what you've done, right, is you've done, you still, you've kept this the same. That's the $2 part of this uh, put spread. And you've just made this short put spread, the 44, 48. Now we've got $4, right? Exactly. And this is the broken wing part. Is that what, what this is uh, describing? Exactly. So the fact that we're long the 50, 48, a $2 put spread, mm -hmm. we're short the 48, 44, which is a $4 put spread. Got it. 
Got it. So, you know, just thinking about that out loud that way, we're long a $2 put spread and we're short a $4 put spread. Mm -hmm. You'd expect that $4 put spread to be more expensive than the $2 put spread that you're long. That's right. And so that's where kind of where this credit comes from. Yeah. Um, so interesting, if, right? The regular ones are typically debits, right? But this one has a little bit of a credit functionality or, or kind of dynamics to it. So, you know, another halfway decent way, if you have a little bit of opinion um, in, in terms of stock movement, direction, I should say, uh, to grab some credit out of this thing too, right? Exactly. That's why I really like them personally for trading is because you can establish a little bit of a credit, uh, benefit from positive data, um, but give yourself that directional bias. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're, we're short the downside put spread, long the $2 put spread above that. Mm -hmm. If stock goes down, stock closes down below 44, we're right. going to be, our, our short put spread is going to be completely in the money and our long put spread is going to be completely in the money, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be the same amount. So, right. um, you know, uh, the long put spread is going to be worth $2. The short put spread is going to be worth $4. So now we're down $2 on this spread. And then we add back in the credit that we collected on initiation. In this case, it's like, let's call it a dollar. You can adjust that price if you want. So, um, so less that does. So you're saying then that the most we can lose here is a dollar. If I'm doing that math correctly, you can, you can make two, lose four, negative two, less the credit, a dollar, negative one. Is that right? Bingo. Okay. Okay, so that's a good way to look at it. Um, I think the graph, if you hit the what if, I think that would show that as well. And I know we probably have to go great. You might hit, be able to hit percentage too. If you maximize that, it might get you where you need to be. There you go. Okay, perfect. So you can see that dynamic in the, in the shape of the graph. And I can see behind your head there, Mark, that on the board, you have that graph drawn like that as well. Exactly, the uh, identical graph. Yep. Um, so yeah, clearly because the two dollar spread up above, we're gonna you know we're gonna lose um, a little you know little different up here. Well, actually, I take that back. Up above, we have the credit. We have the dollar credit. Exactly. So up yep. above uh, that forty uh, eight strike, we're gonna both of those put spreads are gonna be worthless. That's right. Um, that's that's why sorry, I like this a lot. Yep, that's a good um, I, that's a good point. So your long put spread is worth nothing. Your short put spread is worth nothing. And you collected a dollar to do that. So that dollar that you collect on uh, initiation of the trade is the most you can make on the upside. Okay, so safe to say in this example, and I know they're all different, right? This example, we're, we're, we have a bullish bias, right? Because we clearly make money in this direction, which is the bullish direction up, right? And, and you, you can see all that, right? And our loss is down here at 44 at expiration um, when we, you know, in below. So that's the biggest loss we have is that, is that dollars is 95, but I know we did a 105. So um, that's it. That's, that's perfect. I love it. That's exactly correct. And, you know, stocks trading right around 48 right now. So, you know, if we were to sit right here, we'd be in that honey zone where our long put spread is worth its maximum value. Our short put spread uh, expires completely out of the money. Right. Um, and we, we have that, uh, $300 win because sure. $2, uh, long put spread that is fully in the money. Um, and the $1 credit that we collect. So, sure. um, sure, you sure, have sure. that, you know, $300 sweet spot if stock settles, you know, right at that 48 level. Yeah, that's great. So, um, and you, you said yourself, when you're managing your some of your stuff on your on your business, you you use this strategy a, a good bit. Is that correct? Quite a bit, yeah. I, I really like it because it's got that directional bias. Um, uh, that sort of I, I tend to do something actually very similar to this with puts. Um, that you know a directional bullish bias. Collect a little bit of premium. Market sits neutral. Uh, you know you're in sort of this uh, max profit zone. Um, right. And you have a little bit of downside protection, you know, from 48 down to 45, um, it's still going to be um, a, a winner right. for you. Right. And then, you know, just a note to, to, to traders and viewers, right? I mean, he, Mark chose to do this downside put spread $4 wide. You, it can be $3, it can be five, it can be seven, but just understand the narrower you make that bottom put spread, right? The less credit you're going to get, the smaller credit right? Because you're doing a narrower spread. It's not going to be as big of a credit. So your, your potential win there isn't going to be, you know, to the upside as much. Conversely, the wider we make that bigger credit, 
bigger risk. So people always say, hey, some I remember some trader was asking me, I'm looking for the riskless strategy that has no risk and just reward. I said, there's always a trade-off. There's always a trade-off. I, I, I was trying to do that on my whole career too. You know, I thought I could buy premium and have positive theta and not worry about it. Nah, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes a market, right? That's what makes a market. That's why it's called uh, trading and, and risk management, right? So exactly. this is a great spread, though. I really would encourage um, folks to ta have a look at this, this broken wing butterfly, right? I think, A, it's the legs are all contained, meaning there's no extra short legs or not. You're short two, you're long one each, so you're net zero um, in the spread. I love spreads like that, um, that don't have extra short legs. Um, you're collecting theta, right? Time passing is a good thing. So these kind of spreads, I think, are, are, are fantastic, especially if you have an opinion on which way the stock uh, may drift. Exactly. And as you sort of mentioned there, there are so many different ways you can play with it. Um, that, you know, we did two and four. Like you said, you can do two and five. We can go four and eight, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that you can widen them both. And that creates, um, you know, the, the larger those spreads are, the bigger your sort of, you know, tent under the middle is going to be. Right, right. No, that's great. That's a good one. Um, okay, Mark, I think that's fantastic. I love it. All right, great, Mark. That was a good one. I appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week, Lex. Okay, bye now. Bye.